And I'm so happy and so glad you are here today. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on in and share your story with us, dear Julia Christ. Welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. <laughs> so, yes. Um, I have already shared your story a little bit with everyone via um, an email. I sent an email out a few days ago about you. Did you receive it too? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. I, um, yeah, and so I introduced you a little bit. And um, so I talked a little bit about you in the first lesson as well. However, of course, we want to know you're real and the story is real and we want to show the peeps it's possible to, you know, have an awesome life with an online course and not worry about time or retirement or a busy schedule and all of these annoying things, uh, which bother us on a daily basis. <laughs> so if you can um, tell us a little bit about your story. So Julia, uh, Julia and I, we met at university many years ago and she speaks about what? Seven, eight different languages? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you chose you, you chose German to um to create online courses and teach people how to speak German, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, and I'm teaching because what I really love are languages. And well, I study at international business, so it's kind of in this area what I'm doing now with the courses, more or less. And um, yes, yeah, since I love languages, I just combined it. So I'm teaching German, but in several languages. Um, like especially in Portuguese and Spanish, which is very good for me because now in Latin America, like the market is growing like super fast with online courses and so on. So especially now during um, COVID, like I saw my friends, they lost their jobs. They had like financial struggles. But if you have an online course right now is the time because everybody's staying at home. They have nothing to do. Like language schools are closed. So they, they, everybody's learning online right now. Like even because I'm staying here in the Dominican Republic and we have like, uh, ghettos like really ghettos where like people are like really like I don't know like there's a lot of poverty but even they are learning online right now like literally everybody like no matter whether the people are poor or rich every, everything is online right now so I think it's the perfect time right now like um, it's the situation is not good of course uh, like the whole uh, with, the, with COVID but like if you want to create a course I think um, there's hardly a better time than right now for that. Mm -hmm. When yeah. did you start doing this though? You started a long time before COVID, right? Yeah, I started, um, uh, it was 2017, I think, in September. And um, it took me nine months to create the first course because I thought I have to do it all by myself if I would. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's why it just took um, quite a lot of time. I know if I would have taken uh, some help or asked for help, uh, it would be much faster. So that's why, I mean, if you back then, if you would have offered, uh, your um, your teachings, I think um, it would have to help me a lot. Oh. Um, but like after some some practice, now it goes much faster. Like within one month, I can create a course if I uh, if I really sit down every day and, and work on that. So it took some time, and then in the first month, I earned like I think twenty seven dollars or something. And uh, because I launched my first course, <laughs> and I showed it to my mom, and she was laughing. She said, "It's so ridiculous that I'm." working day and night and now I'm earning $27 in a month and then I thought like whatever I would just not give up I just keep on, keep on doing that and then I kept on producing more and more courses and I have like 15 right now I think and um and I'm like right now I'm creating like three or four courses at the same time because now I'm getting help from freelancers and um, they help me with the uh, with uploading the videos with the translations and so on so it goes much faster right now and like within a month, I can create like three or four courses uh, with the help of, of, uh, of freelancers. Nice. Are you getting into different languages or is it still German? Um, it's, I'm just teaching German, but in, uh, in, uh, in English, Spanish and Portuguese, like where I'm, I'm teaching them in different languages. So um, that's why, like right now I'm selling in more than 120 countries. Um, because like I'm selling them on Udemy and you have always like a map, a world map, and then you can see how many students you have where and so on. And it's like uh, all over the place, everywhere, in Africa, That's Asia, and uh, yeah. So that is so really awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And I'm happy that I never gave up because I had so many um, situations where I just wanted to drop everything because I did it on my own, like, and all this technical 
uh, all those programs and so on. I'm not a very technical person, so it really took, it cost me a lot, uh, like of my energy and so on, but it was definitely worth it, definitely. Yeah, amazing. Um, do ever students reach out to you and um, you don't have direct contact with them through Udemy, right? So that is the downside. Uh, they, yeah, yeah, they are sending me e emails also. They can contact me also and I can contact them too. Nice. So are there actually students reaching out to you to have asked you for like private lessons or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. But I said, uh, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not trading my time for money anymore. Never, ever. Not yeah. voluntarily. I'm saying, um, no, sorry, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer uh, producing courses right now because yeah, That's just the point. Up once and, yeah, it's totally different to live this way. You are just free. I mean, like I just work when I want to. You wake up when you want. You go to sleep when you want. You travel when you want. You're completely flexible. And if you want to have this, I mean, it's very difficult to go back again to have a normal job. Or yeah, yeah. What kept you going when you had your technical issues or any other issues? Like, what was the thing what made you like, I'm going to push through and I'm going to do it anyway? Like, what was it? Yeah, it was um, always seeing this freedom I had, always this flexibility and doing what I want when I want. And I knew, I just knew it will work out in the end. I will not give up like this time because I tried so many different other businesses. I always wanted to be self-employed. And um, I always tried it and I didn't like this and that. And it was like filtering kind of what I like and what I don't like. But I knew like with the courses, this is mine because I love teaching and I love languages and it will give me just the life that I always wanted. And because I love traveling and being free and flexible and so on. And it just gave me everything that I wanted. Yeah. Nice. Guys, Ilse has a question. I have a question and sorry if I missed this. I was already covered. Sorry for joining late. No worries. What were the top three reasons to choose Udemy? Um, yeah, uh, the thing is marketing. I have to admit, <laughs> I don't like doing marketing at all. And Udemy just, just does all marketing and like internationally all over the, like all over the world. And um, this is something that really, um, I mean, I know I can, I could probably earn more if I had a own website. And um, the thing with the own website is I have to take care of marketing. And it just, I'd rather stay um, producing a course for one month than spending one day with marketing, to be honest. And I hired like three different people with marketing and I was not very lucky with them. And um, so I just said, whatever, I would just focus on my courses and I would just do these three last ones and then I will see whether I change to a own website or, but with Udemy, it's definitely the marketing because I don't have to take care of anything. Okay. Yeah, but you know, it's like now, like a few years ago when you started, there weren't like these amazing platforms, like for example, think if we go Kanjabi and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it was complicated and it is still complicated. I would never recommend you to build your own school on WordPress and use Learn Dash or anything like that. I've done all of these systems and now all of them inside out. And mm -hmm. I was also so many times so close to just like throw the towel because of tech issues, because of then member present flicked with learn dash and like all of these plugins with and it is just a nightmare and it takes you of your focus however i i wanted to tell you this like so many times already and i did tell you this so many times already like you can go off udemy and it is so easy for you to create your own online school and the marketing doesn't have to be huge or big like you just need to do a little bit of things and you don't have to constantly be on social media all the time like if you set it up properly the right way you can make so much more money with your mm -hmm. online school compared to Udemy because they take a lot a, a huge cut 50 percent and sometimes 75 percent yeah 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 it's like a lot like I, I can create own coupons if I do that I keep like 97 percent of the of the uh, how's it called of what I'm selling but if they do the marketing it's 50 percent and if I, if I let affiliates do that they take 75 percent so that's um that's quite a lot and it's bothering me but I just um you know, I'm still uh, struggling with that, what I should do. What I, but do you think ThinkTech is good and teachable and so on to, to do it with them? Yeah, it depends on, um, so there is no one platform which is good fit for everyone. Like it depends on everyone's business model. It depends on how many different courses you have or what's your value layer, what's your business, how are you driving traffic, all of these things. Like there's no one solution for everyone. Um, and also depends also on other things like, um, uh, do you already have an email software? 
a yes or no. If you don't, then Kajabi would maybe be good because Kajabi brings that with it. Uh, if you already have an email software and you're already paying for hosting and other things, then maybe think if it would be good because they already have it. Depends on if you want to have a community in your platform. Like there's different things that depends on what you want to do with your business. Um, so there's no no perfect fit for every like no answer to that question for everyone. So it depends on your what was the question? Like which one is the um, best? Well, I think big and uh, and teachable. What are better good options? I, I would never put my stuff on Udemy because it's just like, it's just, it's just Good cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You have so much competition. You pay so much commission for like, and the marketing is so easy. Like, honestly, it is, isn't that, but if you don't enjoy it, I can see, you know, why people wouldn't want it. And also Udemy does bring a lot of what 30 million students, I think they have 30 million students. So you have a lot of exposure, of course. But also Ooh. you've got the price cap, right? Like you cannot price your courses higher than a certain amount, which yeah, you don't like, have with your own English, uh, any any uh, school. Yeah, it's like 200 or so that you, like the, the most expensive that you can offer is like 200. At but I think the people, the people who buy on Udemy, I have the feeling they will not spend that much. It's like for Udemy, it's like more like $10, $20 that they would spend because they also, all the time they have like promotions there. So you put the price for like $70, but nobody would ever buy that. Like at least my quiz, they buy it always on promotion. Yeah. Cause it's like a supermarket. Yeah, exactly. Supermarket for courses, basically. It's like Amazon. You have, um, it's the same thing. If you want to, if you want to put your book on Amazon, it depends. Is it good or is it not good? People ask me, it depends if you want, if you want exposure and if you want to collect leads or gain authority, that's amazing. Put your book on Amazon, become a number one bestseller, which is also very easy and say, Hey, by the way, I'm a number one bestseller on Amazon and you get all the traffic from Amazon. However, if you're not looking for authority and you're more looking to actually make money with the book and use it as a book funnel and stuff like that, put it on your own website, sell it for a higher price because the competition is lower. It's the same concept. It doesn't matter if it's book or course, right? But I think what you can do, if you are encouraged and if you like to do the marketing a little bit, you can always put like a free course on Udemy, you know, mm -hmm. to catch people's attention and then say in the free course, hey, by the way, um, if you want to know more information, I've got like a bigger version of this and you can find it on whatever website. You can like kind of like show your mm -hmm. face and, you know, present yourself. But still, it's also the mindset of the people who go and shop in Udemy. They already come with the mindset that they don't um, want to spend whatever yeah. maybe asking outside of Udemy. So it's very different and depends on your market and it depends on how much effort you want to put into outside of the actual course creation. Because you as a course creator, you should never be actually um, worrying about all of that stuff except from really focus on focusing on what you're good at and, and that is teaching that thing to your students right like you mm. shouldn't be worried so much about all of the other stuff if mm. you can outsource it if you want to hire people outsource it if you want to do it yourself it is easy if you if you know how to do it correctly um, but it takes time of course it takes some time to like get it set up and get it right and fix it and you know and do you teach that uh, all that in your uh, in your courses for for, for online yeah. courses it's yeah. all, oh, okay. The whole okay so maybe maybe i should also sign up for your course <laughs> maybe if you if you are looking to move away from that that would be um helpful maybe yeah 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 why not yeah <laughs> i can see your face every week <laughs> <laughs> any more questions guys pete i think you should put some of your courses on udemy to me Oh, <laughs> yeah, not funny, Pete. Yeah. Um, so, guys, do you have any more questions? There's someone else coming. The time is now. Jules, um, are you in the dom rev, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's early. Like, yeah, it's 9.20, 9.23 here in the morning. Thank you for making us your priority in the morning <laughs> so yes um guys if you've got any questions the time is now to ask julia um ed just popped in at quick introduction this is 
Oh, he hasn't managed to join on in right yet. Uh, yeah, I think there was a um, question. Mm, what structure do you follow for creating your course content? Do you use a template? Who is this question for? Uh, Julia, you, you, obviously for you, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, the thing is, um, before I created the, the online, online courses, I was teaching online. I was just a, um, I was a German online teacher. And I prepared the, the students for the certificates because in Europe we have this A1 for beginners, A2 level for advanced beginners, and then B1, B2, C1 and C2. So I prepared them and I did that for like three years. And I, um, so I knew the whole structure, like everything that they're teaching in language schools, I knew it like in and out already, like everything, like all, all the subjects, all the grammar that they needed, the vocabulary. And then I thought like, why should I sit down every day and teaching them always the same? Like there are so many students and I was teaching the same to everyone. And I thought like that, that just doesn't make sense because I had a friend who was, um, who was also, who likes passive income. He has also several streams of passive income. And he told me, Julia, what are you doing that? Why don't you just, um, record one course because it's always the same with what you're teaching anyways and then you just sell the course because then you can just save, save time in the end and um it has much more leverage than sitting there like teaching one person you just set up one course and then you sell it to thousands of people and then it really made sense to me so then I, that he gave me this idea actually so i started doing this um this course and so that's why i knew the the the, the structure of the course i'm just following what the what teachers teach the students in the language school for each level Nice. Dee is asking when you choose to teach German, was it because you taught where was the need or because you like German? Um, yeah, first I love languages. And um, like also during my studies, I was teaching like when, when we met in Istanbul, where we studied, I was also teaching there. I was teaching English in a language school. Oh. And I was always like teaching. I just, um, I like teaching and German is my, let's say well, my native language. and. Um, yeah, that's why I just combined it, you know. Yeah. And there's a, uh, yeah, they, they are, they, of course, there are a lot of students, uh, a lot of people who are studying. Also in India, I have like, uh, in I'm selling the most in Brazil, then Mexico, and on the third place is India. I'm selling a lot in India, actually. There are a lot of people who are learning uh, German there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many languages do you speak? Um, well, it's like about seven, like five that I really speak, uh, let's say fluently. And then I learned, I uh, know I learned three more, but it's like more for survival, let's say. It's more for survival. It's not like that I can speak uh, like I'm speaking to you right now. Do you sp uh, still remember Turkish? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that means? One soup, please. They yeah, had just like a few words. Merhaba, Nesasin. Uh, did, you, did you study Turkish also? Yeah. 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 Just a few words, same. I don't remember it, apart from the basics, but yeah. Yeah, just same with me. <laughs> um, I think it would be amazing for you to um, build up your own online school and you could make so much more money. And honestly, mm -hmm. like it makes me, I looked at your whole profile and you had so many sales in your Udemy profile, like it hurts my heart to see that like it, it really like it isn't that it isn't that difficult if you just really as you know stick to something for a little bit and just mm. really make it happen and fix it as good as it can get and then just have it run an autopilot later on down the line once you have your funnel mm. set up maybe your webinar or your challenge whatever you want to do and then mm. you know it, it will be so worth it at the end yeah yeah i know it's just like Oh, you know, right now in the Dominican Republic, you know, I just want to enjoy the beaches. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will, I will, um, I will uh, see what I will do. I will look into your course also, yeah. because I'm sure that you have a lot of information for me also. There's always a place for improvement, always. Yeah, I will share the link with you later. You can have a look. We have another question. When you choose to, ch oh no, that was already, and then what, one advice? Can you give to someone who doesn't have a course yet? Um, yeah, just have patience. And um, I mean, it doesn't have to be like for me, it was because as I said, I'm not a technical person for me. It just uh, and I had no experience at all with nothing with Adobe because I'm editing and 
like all those programs, I had to learn everything from scratch. But if there, I'm sure there are people who know a lot about it, then it will be not such a such a struggle as it was for me. And besides, I did it by myself. That was, that was really um, the thing. So if you get help, it's. Um, but um, yeah, my number one advice: always see the future ahead. See what you're working towards. See the freedom and um, you know a stress-free life and so on. So yeah, that's really something that. Um, have the end goal in mind. Mm. How many alterations do you make to your courses or have you found it easy to create the courses because you have taught for so long already? Pete is mm. up. I like I enjoy teaching. That's why um it depends. Like I have friends who say that they don't like teaching at all, but if you if you kind of like it, I think um yeah, and then alterations, um of course. Yeah, sometimes the students are writing because they cannot upload a PDF file or so. So I just check on that. But um, there's not too, once you do it, it's, it's just there. Maybe there are some technical issues, but it's like if they cannot download the PDF, it's more like from Udemy maybe, or they're using the wrong browser or so. So I hardly do anything. Like on Udemy, they ask you questions about, like in my case, about uh, grammatical things and so on. So I answer them, and um, but it's not... Once you, you once you have it, you basically um, can leave it. <laughs> yeah. Unless you have a new idea and you upload something. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think when it comes to like updating your course, when you have like a topic like you have like languages which never change, um, mm. you don't really ever need to do anything. If you've got a course about marketing, you constantly gotta update it because that always changes. Like marketing is an ever fast changing thing. Like what works today doesn't work in like five months or six months, maybe, maybe not, depending on whatever many how many factors, right? But also I think if you wanna be be the best and you do wanna aim to be the best on top of your game like all the time anyway, and if you want to keep adding value to your course, Pete, what are you thinking of doing? Like what topic is it? Like if you create a course on like whatever and you come, you finished it, but you come further down the line, you, you yourself, of course, keep learning and evolving on your own topic as well all the time. And you think, oh, this could be amazing to be added to the course. Why not add it? Why not add more value to your students? You know, I always think um, it's a good idea to update it and to upload. Of course, people find the idea attractive of like never changing it and stuff, which is totally possible. See Jules. Mm. Um, but I, for me personally, I, I like to do that. Like I like to add more stuff if I can do, because I want to, I want to be the best. <laughs> I want to provide the most value. <laughs> do you have a social media page for students or just when they email you? Uh, yeah, I have social media on Instagram and on Facebook. Yeah, I can, I, I can send it to you or if um, somebody wants to have it. Oh, for students, for the students. Yeah, for, ah, so like a group or something on social media. Um, do you communicate with your students through Udemy or? Yeah, it's uh, usually there's an automatic email they receive when they sign up for a course and when they finish that, like congratulations and so on. And they can always contact me if they need something. Sometimes they ask things about language schools in Germany or about some subjects, not too much, but they can contact me directly and then I answer. When I see the name. Mm -hmm. Pete is thinking of doing a course to teach people approaches for video interviews. Cool. Nice. And um, also there was one more question of here from Pete. Do you analyze dropout rates at certain points in the videos? Uh, no. No. Okay. That's good insights because I would like to add to this because in Kajabi for or Thinkific both, for example, you can send automatic, the system will send automatically notifications to your students if they don't come back, if they stop learning at, at some point and say, Hey, remember, you got to finish your lesson on X, Y, Z, come back. And if they get this email that increases your success rate on people you know mm -hmm. completion rate first of all people actually complete the course you want to really be focusing on that as well and then which obviously brings great success more success to more people if they finish it so that is a good thing with uh kajabi to think of it for example they do that automatically learners mm -hmm. doesn't um yeah 
How do you decide on the length of the course versus price specifically in Udemy where all is approximately 10? Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, yeah. That was something I was thinking about too because my courses are super long because it's like the same content as in a, in a language school. So it's very large. I have friends who also do Udemy courses. They have courses of like two hours and um, mine are like about 10 hours or so. And um, like I'm just working on the last uh, like level courses for the entire level. And if I do like for, like more courses later on, I would just do them much shorter because it's the same price, no matter whether you have a course for, for $10 or a course for like, uh, yeah, for $10, which is like 10 hours long or two hours long, it's the same price because on Udemy, like for my courses, at least I have the feeling like people are not ready to spend more because it's really like, as you said, like a supermarket, like a discounter, like on Udemy. So yeah. they are not, not really ready to spend more for that. So. That's yeah. why like, it's just way too, way too long, like my courses, because I know if I had my own website, I could charge much more, much more money. The value yeah. is much more than $10. And um, yeah, so. Um, one thing I want to throw in here, um, so we, we've got 10 more minutes. I want to throw in here um, regarding the price. If, think about the value you're providing it doesn't it doesn't necessarily um at all actually depend on the length of your course like it doesn't if you can of course with languages it's different because it's like so many vocabulary and so much to learn however if you can if you teach something else and you can bring a point across in a short amount of time why not do that why mm -hmm. why trying to drag out and you know talk about it for like hours and hours just to have more length. No, your students would be more grateful if you can teach them in a faster way so they can implement faster and gain the results a lot faster. So that, you know, don't, don't get, get caught up in like, Oh, my course is maybe just like an hour or two or anything like that. Should I price it lower or anything? It depends on the value on the perceived value of your student. Like how fast can you get them the result, the desired result? Like that is the thing what you need to keep in mind all the time. And then they pay you whatever they, they feel like is it, it's worth it. It's less about the actual hours, if you will. So, uh, Tina, this is for you. How do you manage all the interactions on social media, student pages, et cetera, if you have more than one course on social media, student pages? I don't have my students on social media. So what do you mean? <laughs> um, you can have in different, um, uh, uh, what's it called, programs, you can have your own little social media platform, your own little community where you can dissect people with different topics. Like you can have like chats, like we have now, you can have like chats in Thinkific or in Kajabi, for example, um, or Teachable as well, where people can talk to each other about the topic, um, like group pages for those who enroll in the course. Yeah, you can set that up within the actual um, platform, or you can also do it on Facebook, which I do not recommend ever and ever again. Um, have everything off Facebook if you can. So have a group separately for your paying customers and then they can ask questions during the week and maybe it depends on how you sell your course it, this is this has got a lot to do with your support system like how many how much support do you set up for your students because you keep in mind you want to get results for them so if you say okay if you buy my course i come on live once a week every sunday around the same time and answer all your questions or maybe once a month or maybe every two weeks whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever you think you can give, you obviously want to show up and you don't want to like burn out yourself. You want to offer what you can do. So um, you can set it up in, in different uh, schools as well separately and then send out emails or many chats to just like remind people, Hey, I'm coming on live and stuff like that. If they don't have questions, if they're not struggling, maybe they don't come, but um, it's nice to have an engaged group actually, and to build up that community as well, because maybe during the week, if people ask each other, each other question, maybe someone else will already answer the question and you don't have to, but also you as the, teacher or coach or whoever, whatever we call ourselves, educators, <laughs> um, you will also learn about your, your students' problems a lot more, which helps you again to understand more how you can create valuable content, which is so, so important for you to understand when you then are ready to drive traffic to your online course through social media posts, through blog posts, through uh, 
podcast, YouTube videos, whatever you decide to do later. We discuss this further down the line because you're far away from that. Um, but that is so, so valuable for you to understand your target, uh, target customer much, much better. Hope that helps. Uh, Peach, do you think that people receive more quality based on the longer length of your courses though? So people may pick your course over others on Udemy. Um, yeah, the thing is for, um, with my courses, I mean, I don't look too much into um, the competitors, let's say, but when I see, I just see like the people who teach German, they usually teach like, I don't know, German for when you travel or German, whatever, like it's um, like, it's just one certain subject, but what I'm teaching is like the whole level, like the whole A1 level, A2 level. So it's, that's why it's so long because like all the content, I could never put it in like in two hours because the German grammar, I mean, every language, like the grammar needs to be learned and the German grammar is very specific. So you need to, to teach that, to teach the students, to explain it, to practice. So that's why it's so long. And, and I mean, my students are very happy. Of course, there are always people who would just leave some I don't know, but like overall, I'm receiving a lot of emails where people are thanking me and saying, oh, I've been learning German for years and my teacher has never explained this and now I understand and so on. So I think they are quite happy with, uh, with the courses. And um, I mean, I could also make a course of just two hours. I don't know why I had this, specific, this idea to make those, those long courses for like the entire level. But it, I mean, it was worth it in the end. But as I said, like the next courses will not be that long anymore. I will, um, that's just a lot of work, like those 10 hours that, because like the editing and so on, it's just so much like, and then like for the $10, the value, but if I do, if I put those courses that I have on my own website, then of course it will be something different, then it will be much more, more worth it. Yeah. Um, you can, if like so many things just popped in my head, like guys, we will do this in, in one of the days, um, uh research like keyword research and all of that stuff for your topic idea this popped to my mind julia when you just said like german for travelers or, or learn german when i travel or something like that i can imagine this gets so many searches a month you just really gotta research that and if it does oh my god you know this is like the bonus for you like you can this is like people love the short like if you have a two hour course on like a crash course on like hey if you want to go on a short trip to germany these are the things you need to know and then like just put that into an online course this sells like crazy like depending on the searches you will get on that on google and youtube and everywhere else mm -hmm. you must do it specifically with your your credibility now like you can already say like hey look at this i have how many students Twenty thousand. yeah like more than twenty thousand like why would nobody like why would people not buy from you right mm. like there's no reason not to <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah i have to look more into that like going going down and niching down is, is specifically in that language is, is going to be it's going to be a lot of money <laughs> it is going to be a lot of money <laughs> because also like people don't like i i mentioned earlier um uh, only 30% of the people who actually buy courses open up the courses and not every one of those 30% actually finish them. So crazy. Yeah. You, uh, you know, if you have like a crash course for travelers, that would be awesome. That would be like a bestseller. No, no doubt about it. <laughs> anyway, do you guys have more questions? We've got two more minutes. Let me see who is still here. I think people are still here, but maybe do other things. Or thanks for all the advice. Welcome. <laughs> Good luck with your short courses. Yes. We need to talk about it. I'm so excited about this right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm available, Tina, you know, if you want yeah. to talk. We, we can chat about that. So um, I'm going to wrap it up right now, right here. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming on and sharing your amazing story and hopefully leave everyone else very inspired. And um, I shall see everyone tomorrow. Thanks for sharing, Julia, as it says. 
look out for my emails. If I'm not on Facebook, I'll be in your email box. And thank you for coming today. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.